everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, so just recently my channel has hit 1500 subscribers. I, if I were a better editor, I would add in some confetti and some noisemaker and some balloons here because it really is amazing to me and I'm so thankful and just even more so during such a difficult times as we're in now, just to feel such support really, really, really means a lot to me. <sighs> so I don't want to be too mushy. Um, the tears are flowing pretty easy these days. So I'm going to be careful here, but let's get into today's video. Last month I filmed my tiny pans, pan that palette, and my pan those eyeshadows together. I had a request to separate them and so I'm going to try to do that this month and I'm going to see if I think that will work better for me in the long term or you know maybe back and forth sometimes. I don't know. I don't, I don't think we have to set anything in stone but today, this month we're going to be separate. So this is going to be Pan Those Eyeshadows update number one. My overall recap on doing this project for the first time, I really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, and 20 times seems a lot longer for me than I thought it was going to feel. I do have a lot of other kind of panning projects going on and a lot of other eyeshadows kind of floating around. And I think that's really why I feel that way. I think if this were my only project, I wouldn't be like, oh gosh, I have to use this 20 times. It's never going to happen. But just so you know, those were kind of my observations for my very first month of doing this project. ABH blushing I used six times. And I've mentioned before that the shadow is really, really hard to see on its own. And it's Definitely a great blending shadow though. So that's all I've ever used it for. I have used this quite a bit over time, but in this particular project, I've used it six times. So I have 14 more to go. I actually used it today, which is counting on next month. Um, so yeah, 13 times. MAC Shock Factor. Okay, so this one I am actually going to declutter. I used it three times and it, it just had to go. I used it, the first time I used it, I just used it kind of straight out, just used it, did a look, and I went to like the grocery store or something. And by the time I got home, it was completely gone. I was like, whoa, did that really just happen? So I didn't even get a little look photographed because I was in a hurry and I was like, well, I'll photograph when I got home and it was gone. Um, <laughs> so I realized that I, it, after it had completely disappeared, I was like, I'm gonna play with this a few more times and kind of see if I can make it work or what's going on here. If it was just a fluke. The other times I wore it, you know, I was just playing with it and comparing it against with other shadows and I was trying like primers. And yeah, I have a couple photos that I might share. They're terrible, but <laughs> I'll share them anyways because I love you guys. But the first one has primer on one eye, nothing on the other, and the shadow just doesn't stick at all without a primer. So a lot of times um, I have different ways that I'll apply, but if you, somebody who sets your eyeshadow, this is not gonna stick. I had a shadow, another shadow on, and it just came right off of it. Um, this is only after an hour or two, so it got really, really patchy with the primer um, because I, I kind of figured out that the next time I did it, that if you really, really build it up and build it up on top of itself, on top of a primer, and really press it in with your fingers, um, it works a lot better. So this next photo is when I did figure that out, I built it up and I pressed it in with a primer. And then on the other eye, I did the VZ Art Editorial Brights palette and I combined two of the shades in there um, to make a similar shade. And I also used primer just to be fair and shock factor held up to this, but I think you can clearly still see that over just a few hours it had faded a lot more, or, you know, it had faded more than the VZ Art. So it's just not that great of a shadow. It's an iffy color for me anyways. Not something I'm gonna wear that much as it is. So I'm pretty comfortable just letting it go, especially knowing that I can just use two the two VZ Art shadows and get a very similar look. All right, Juvia's Place Custard is a really nice formulation. It really is an interesting color. I've worn it three times. I really enjoy it. I see that as something you know, I would definitely reach for in my collection so it can stay. Butter London Queen, I have used five times. And I really, really struggled with this one because I, I wanted to declutter this. Um, 
and I'm still kind of struggling with it just a bit, but the formulation of the shadow is great. There's something about this palette that I, I have just been wanting to declutter it. I have no idea really why, because I like the color story. I, I don't know what it is. And I tried really hard to see that if I had better formulations of similar colored shadows as just Queen. I didn't do all of the shadows, but and I'm just keeping it real. This shadow held its ground with every one of my top brands. Um, VZ Art, Natasha Denona, like all the big guys. <laughs> like this shadow was just as good as any of them. And so I guess it's going to stay for now. I'll keep working on it, but you know, the fate of this palette, um, who knows. Ofra Rodeo Drive. So I used Ofra Rodeo Drive five times as well. The formulation of this one isn't as blingy as I sometimes want, but I can build it up with Fix Plus or primers, um, and it's incredibly easy to wear. And it's actually really kind of nice, I guess, to have this kind of nice, soft, neutral shimmer that is just incredibly flattering. It's incredible, like, um, romantic almost. I It can also be used with a highlighter. I mean, it can also be used as a highlighter, so that's that's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, I like I like this one. It's definitely staying. And I have, so I have one shadow going out and I need to add in my new shadow. I drew beforehand. I know that that takes a little bit of the fun out of it, but I, if I'm honest and my organization system just needs for me to kind of do it in advance, I might figure out how to do it on camera one day, but the shade, but I, I just can't right now. Um, the shade that I drew was wheat from the Smashbox palette. It was palette five shade two. I really have been wanting to play with this palette for a few, few years now, but my pan that palette was also like this kind of cool toned vibe. And I just never got to this. Every time I was like, well, let's do a cool tone. You know, I was going to reach for the pan that palette. And I did that for two years. So yeah, um, I'm really hopeful. I'm glad I, that now that I'm going to be so hopefully that I'm going to be reaching for this palette to use shade number two, I'll take the opportunity since it's going to be out already and play with it for a bit, um, get some use out of it. I actually thought about making this my tiny pans, but I hadn't played with it enough to be sure that I like the formula that much. And like I said, it was just like my other one <laughs> that I just used. Um, the shade is actually incredibly boring. Uh, and I would have preferred something else, but I'm going to try to make the most of it by at least getting some use out of the palette. And guys, that's my pan, those eyeshadows for February 2021 or intro. I don't know if it's January, February, kind of recap January, intro to February, I guess. I will swatch out my new palette for the month and you guys can let me know what you think. Also, please let me know if you are enjoying this video and I will stop by and say hi on your channel and watch your video and let you know what I think of your palette. And yeah, thanks so much, guys. I really appreciate you being here. I know I've said that a bunch, but it's so true. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.